Good morning and welcome to the next podcast of Andy Collier Talks Cricket Memorabilia. I hope you've had a good week. It's been another interesting week here, I have to say. Bits and pieces turning up. Um, a bit more on uh, Alfred Christie as well, so that'd be quite interesting to uh, show you what's happening there. Uh, anyway, well done to Bournemouth yesterday for beating Arsenal. And come on, you march your reds for this afternoon against Chelsea. Anyway, without further ado, <clears throat> rivals this week, we've got the Cricket Society News Bulletin. All sorts of bits and pieces in there. The other good society to be involved with. Um, a London branch there. Uh, it's obviously a national branch, but in the London one, you've got, uh, we've got uh, Matt Appleby. We've got uh, uh, Stephen Chalk and Brian Close. There's some quite interesting evenings coming up there. The AGM as well. Southwestern branch. Got uh, Daryl Mitchell and Fred Rumsey. Graham Burgess, Mike Burns and Sam Hollingshead. So some good ones there. The Midlands branch got Mark Ramper, Cashfield, Neil, Simon Mann. That'd be an interesting evening. He's a great commentator, Simon Mann, I have to say. Thoroughly enjoy listening to him on the radio. Um, anyway, so that's the Cricket Society News Bulletin. Also arrived was Chris Saunders' new catalogue. Some interesting bits in there, I've got to say. Um, there's a nice scorecard at the back there. So if you can get onto his website, Steve, uh, Chris Saunders, um, got some nice bits and pieces in there. So well done to Chris for getting that lot up. So anyway, what's arrived this week in the memorabilia front? Peter Burge on the uh, heritage front there. I've got another one of those come over. Um, this one, who's he? Uh, 28, Peter Burge. Useful player indeed. So that's the player edition there. I had to wonder if I did make a mistake and got the wrong header card there. This is one for the 500 set. So I need the one for the 200 so, um, onwards and upwards on that set. So, there we are. Uh, nice WG Grace one here. Who have we got there? We've got Lance Thackeray with a WG G Grace uh, postcard. Plain back, but it's a, it's a Raphael Tuck card. Um, so, quite a nice one there. On there it says, it is not so easy. So, I'm not quite sure that, what that refers to. But um, WG Grace there with his uh, MCC cap on. So anyway, on to a bit more uh, research on our man Christie there. Um, Roger's been on the case and also David, or Derek's been on the case rather, sorry. And we come up with, uh, or Derek come up with, beg your pardon, uh, Roger came up with these uh, um, obituaries and reports from the Kent Times, the Sheerness Times, Guardian, Isle of Thanet Gazette, so some... Serious uh, research going on there. Anyway, I'll just read you this one here. Uh, Cuddam, Suicide of a Gentleman, it says here. On Saturday, C.J. Carter, Esquire, coroner, held an inquest at Apperfield Court, Cuddam, respecting uh, the death of Mr. Arthur Christie, 58, until recently one, one of the firm of well-known hatters. The deceased has appeared, it appeared lately, quitted the business and ba at the value of his share in the concern, which on being released amounted to about £50,000, that's a serious amount of money in those days, was placed in place to his credit. He was, however, possessed with the idea that he should become a pauper. He had lately taken to rising very early in the morning and on Thursday at 5am quitted his bedroom and went into his dressing room. <coughs> Shortly afterwards, a report of a gun was heard and the footman, which he was in his employ, and two farm labourers, having got into the room through the window, found Mr Christie lying on the floor dead with a gun by his side. The weapon had recently been discharged, the contents lodging in Mr Christie's brain. The general appearance of the room and position of the body of the gun went to show that the deceased had committed suicide by pressing the trigger with his foot. The jury returned a verdict that the deceased committed suicide while suffering from temporary and mental derangement. So that's quite a nice uh, um, write up there on his suicide. So all sorts of other bits and pieces turn up. Now, he was 25 stone when he died, Alfred Christie. So, well, whether he's 25 stone there, obviously this picture could have been taken a couple of years beforehand, but um, he's not, I don't think he's tight 25 stone there, but he might well be. But all the uh, arrows are pointing in the right direction. We've got, um, 
uh, Westerham there where he died, what's all that same area. So it's all pointing in the right direction and that bit definitely being Mr. Christie. Um, but anyway, the day at the uh, um, the library should be able to sort that out with a bit of luck. So research is in use. And then Derek uh, forwarded the uh, uh, this to me. John Christie was his father. He was a master of felt makers. So that's where all the hat business come from. And he was a Quaker, went to America, um, then come back to England and started this felt making company up. Uh, nine, um, and it was, it was Marshall, or, oh, sorry, big problem. Sir Geoffrey Christie Miller, who's obviously a partner from 1905, managed the Stockport branch and was master of the felt makers company in 1954-55. So um, a bit more history there on uh, John Christie, who was the father um, of of Alfred who had six children one of them was Frederick as we've mentioned before who actually went to Australia and uh, was a big man in uh, railways and invented a special box that goes into the gearbox um, which saved all sorts of things for the railway company so he was very well thought of um, died in 1909 that was Frederick who played three games for Surrey uh, a little bit of his brother, but he only played one, but he played for, <coughs> played for Surrey Club as well. Anyway, that's about it for this week. I hope you've enjoyed that little uh, catch-up on Alfred Christie and the rest of the bits and pieces. Have a good one. Cheers.